Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, aka the Man of Spoils, and we have a whole host of new information about Zack Snyder's Justice League. The man giving updates, so gotta call him Crack Snyder, has just dropped a ton of info regarding the project across multiple interviews with multiple YouTubers that aren't. that aren't me. I'm guessing everyone's mother was named Martha. I'm just kidding and that's why I don't get interviews. However, we've compiled everything you need to know to give you the lowdown on all the ins and outs of what we learned from the information. I don't want to disgrace myself, eh? So full credit to Beyond the Trailer, the film junkie and ping pong flicks for speaking to the main man and getting this amazing info out of him. Anyway, I feel like the first thing we need to talk about is the removal of the Snyder Cut trailer from all Warner Brothers social media platforms. Though the haters said it was because the film was cancelled, it actually happened because of the music Hallelujah which has caused some rights issues. Behind the scenes, things had not been 100% agreed and thus Warner Brothers had to rework the contract so that everything was above board. However, as per the interview with Ping Pong Flicks, Zack said they will be re-releasing the trailer and also an additional black and white one which he will break down on his Vero account. This is because Snyder said he would love to release a black and white version of the film which would probably save a, a ton of money on making the Superman suit black for the entire film. So, so smart move and that's why I don't get interviews. Now I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to release this video before or after the release of said trailer but I am recording it beforehand. Zack said there would be a couple of additional shots in it to make it something special so that it wasn't just a re-release of the trailer that we've already completely seen. As he said, there's only some extra moments in the updated teaser. I wasn't sure whether it was worth holding this video off until after it's released, but if there's a lot more, then I will be doing a big breakdown tomorrow. Zack is doing his own in-depth breakdown, so I don't want to just rehash what he says, but we will see. Anyway, if you're here from the future, and I'm too soon, then there's a lot more material and my bad, I'll get my clown costume on. Now today is the anniversary of the Twitter revolution, released the Snyder Cut, that actually led to the release becoming a reality. Throughout the day it's rumoured that we're going to be getting a lot of surprises, so I will of course keep you up to date with any of the other major announcements that I might have missed. Anyway, all that aside, we do know that the film is getting some additional scenes which will include Jared Leto's Joker. Zack told Grace that he had a completely different look for the character and though it would be honouring what had been created, there would be some major changes. Snyder said that some water had gone under the proverbial bridge since the character's last appearance and that he's now a road weary joker. Grace had actually seen the look and stated that it was very video gamey and I kind of have some theories about what this could be. Now full spoilers ahead for what's apparently at the end of the movie, so if you don't want anything ruined then I recommend that you turn off now. Also yeah, su subscribe to the channel if your mother's name's Martha and that's why I don't get interviews. Anyway, we do know that Jim Lee drafted storyboards for the ending of the film which showcased a 5 year time jump in which Darkseid had invaded the planet. The only survivors left were Batman, The Flash, Cyborg and some select others. However, as we now know there are additional scenes, I actually think that the Joker will be there too. I would love it if the pair had put their differences to the side and were having to work together in order to save the world. This would be very video gamey in my opinion, explain why the Joker looks so road weary and also open the door for spin offs which is another thing that Grace brought up. Now as I said I haven't seen the trailer yet so if Joker is in it then I, I do look stupid but who knows they could still include some shots of him early on before spinning off into this at the end. Snyder said it was fun having the band back together for this little vignette and if it is a post credits scene then I think it would be a great thing to spin off into the future with. With us knowing that the additional scenes total in at 4 minutes, it could also be that Ben Affleck's return pops up at this moment. There is of course the return of Deathstroke who has dropped in to add some more things and who knows we might end up with a nightmare universe in which Batman and these two enemies are forced to work alongside each other in order to help the greater good. Superman is of course an enemy in this universe so it does make sense that there are a lot of people switching sides. Jared Leto also of course wants a chance to redeem his betrayal uh, after, you know, a lot of people were disappointed in the last one so I am hyped to see it. As for the other additional moments that were picked up, Snyder did say that they would be very minor and sprinkled throughout the cut. 
Some media outlets have gone off on this and said that the movie is pretty much going to be exactly what we saw in the theatrical version, but I think that's a really bad take. The theatrical one weighed in at 2 hours and the Snyder Cut will be 4, so even with the 4 minutes, you're still going to get more than double the runtime and material that we saw in Justice League. Plus we have the scenes that Zack originally filmed which Joss Whedon reshot and I really feel like tonally this is going to be a completely different movie. Zack stated that there are elements such as Barry Allen coming to grips with his father's situation as well as Victor dealing with his. We have these two opposing father figures and their relationships with their sons so there is a lot of material that they can really delve into. Snyder also said he directed Ezra Miller through Zoom due to the pandemic whilst he was filming Fantastic Beasts, so th there are little things that they're doing just to, to add some more life to the movie. Now when discussing the idea of things changing with the cut, Snyder confirmed that we are seeing the version that they originally shot and though some changes were made slightly after, the 4 hours will be exactly what was filmed in England back in 2016. So the added scene will be a Jared Leto centric one and Zack stated that though drawings had been done, it was only now that they were able to solidify it. Snyder said this additional work was super simple to film, which would be the case if it was the nightmare moment, I think, as the majority of this is on a green screen, though it might not be as 2020 is looking a lot worse than this does. Now Zack also actually cleared up this moment in Batman v Superman and explained how Bruce was able to have the vision. He stated that in his universe, when one jumps back in time, they create a vortex in which several aspects of that reality come through and these elements can be projected through into the mind of those in contact with it. The fact that it was brought up does lend itself more towards my theory and Snyder himself stated that he purposely shot the scene in BBS because it would have massive ramifications for the future. In addition to this, across the interviews, there are other points that I think are massively interesting. Snyder also said there would be seeds planted for the future defenders of the earth and this does tease towards the Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter cameos which will likely be featuring in the show. Snyder said that the story would continue heading in the direction that they clearly set out all the way back in Batman v Superman. As for the feature itself, the director did say that if he was asked to come back and do more in his universe, that he would be interested. However, he didn't have any expectations as of now and that the bridge was far away in regards to him returning to work on new projects. Snyder said he's happy that Wonder Woman, Aquaman and The Flash are all branches of a tree that he planted a long time ago and that he's happy that these things have come forth from the universe he created. As for the release date, we did see in a recent TV spot that the series will release in March 2021, but we should be getting a, a full date soon if it's not already in the trailer, which this is why I don't get interviews. So the release of the cut is not too long away and we also had it confirmed that it would be appearing on Amazon Prime Video outside the US. Many people, myself included, were worried about the distribution of the project purely because it was only labelled as being on HBO Max, which is exclusive to America. However, we do know that Amazon have picked it up, but whether it's releases the same day that HBO Max get it or a couple of days after definitely remains to be seen. Anyway, that's all the major new updates and I have to say I'm even more hyped for the release. I know I've been moaning about not getting an interview, but shoutouts to the people that did. They're all big names in the Snyder Cut community and I think it shows just how much Zack loves the fans that he went to the people he did rather than the big outlets that have been downplaying and denying the project existed for, for so many years now. Zack knows who supported him and as fans, let's all enjoy the day and the new looks. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the info and what you hope to see in the film. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoy this video, yeah? Just, just drop a little thumbs up, Make, makes a big difference and make sure you check out our breakdown of last week's updates which covered everything we didn't mention here. Don't forget we're giving away 3 copies of the Marvel Phase 2 box set and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 30th of November so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see contents early then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat us on a Discord server linked in the description or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Paul. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.